All right, guys, so we're out here next to the power walls. You might be able to hear those in the background humming away. It's um, about 515 here, so the power walls are actually working. We're at peak solar times right now here in Tucson for the summer months. So this is the time I have those set up to um, kind of cover the grid. This is the my second solar update. This is July of 2023. Check out my first two videos on the solar system if you want to find out more about the system specifically as well as the second video, kind of a quick update how this system was doing so far. It was in, kind of installed, took about six months and turned on in February. We ran it for about eight days in February and it's now July. So we've got a little bit of data here to discuss. One of the things I talked about in my last video was the fact that I was having some weird patterns on my energy production tab. And I've since been in contact with Tesla and they have admitted that there's a problem. Essentially, what they said in a nutshell is that it seems to be a software issue, but my system is making the power that they promised. So uh, they're working on it, supposedly taking it seriously. And the, the woman that I spoke to on the phone was actually great, uh, very helpful, very knowledgeable. And I will say it's pretty hit and miss. Uh, I was on chat with two other people. One was decent. The other one was so-so. And then the third one basically said, yeah, what you're seeing is normal and disconnected me from chat. So I thought that was lovely. Um, I then found it was the fourth time I actually did chat early in the morning and the gentleman was like, yeah, something's definitely going on. And he gave me the phone number to the Tesla solar team specifically. And that's where I talked to uh, Becky, who was awesome. Like I said, uh, very helpful. So basically where we're at at this point is I still have not heard back from them. And it's been probably five or six weeks, give or take, something like that. Um, and I wanted to show you on the app, which I'll put up on the screen, some of the stuff that I'm talking about. Um, so let's go into the solar part here. So let's go back a few days. I wanna show you some of the patterns that we had. I can't remember, yeah, so here we go. All right, so from that second video, you can see some of these patterns were shown. So this is Tuesday, June 6th. Um, this is the fourth now look at june 3rd all that right there is on a perfectly sunny day um, it's basically power is dropping off at least production is i have no idea what's happening and you see i still had decent generation 56.8 prior to this i had been in the 60s and the low 60s already kilowatt hours for the day and then if you look again june 4th not great now here on the June 5th, that one little spot in the middle is definitely just a drop in power, no idea what caused that. But all that other jagged stuff, those are clouds. Um, this one here is a really bad day on the right side, looks really funky. Um, so it was right in this area where I finally got in touch with Becky and thought they had fixed things because about three or four days later, I had three days of this, 67.8. You can see it's almost a perfect graph. Same thing with um, the 11th, 68.8, and then 69.1 on June 12th. So I thought, wow, cool, this is, they fixed it, they figured out the issue. Um, but then you can see the 13th had one little spot, and then on the 14th back to kind of some weird uh, pauses or reduced reductions in power production. And that kind of went on, even though this day right here is actually still pretty good, even though it had all those drop-offs, still hit 63, which is great. Um, and then it continued on this one. You can see at the beginning in the morning on the left hand side there That is drop-offs in power that I can't explain and then on the right side. Those are actually clouds That's a very cloudy day um, And then the last few days, so let's get up to You can see here starting on July 1st ex another excellent day 64.5 I think there's not quite that 68 69 level because it's been so hot we're in the 105 to 110 range here the last week or two. So production uh, is not gonna be as high when the panels get hot from what I understand. So you can see almost three days, four days of really good production. Again, on the fifth was nearly perfect. Um, sixth, and then today was actually a pretty good day. This was clouds. We did have clouds on and off, uh, but it was still mostly a sunny day and I can't complain about 58.9 and we still have some production going. In fact, right now we are still producing three kilowatts. So nothing to complain about there. Um, 
All this to say, I still have no idea what's causing those weird patterns. Uh, it does not appear to be fixed. It kind of goes in and out still. So I'm gonna give it another week or two, and then I'm gonna get in touch with Tesla again and see if they've come up with any solutions or if they have any anything to tell me about it. It's not like it's a huge deal, but if you're talking about five to 10 kilowatt hours less production on a perfectly sunny day over a month, that's a pretty good amount. So I definitely wanna get it figured out. Um, the more, more I produce, the more I get the system paid back, and then the more it pays off down the road. So I'm still working on trying to figure out what this is all about. I wanna say thanks to the few folks that did comment on the last video, kind of giving me some suggestions as what could be going on. And uh, if I'm reaching out to you guys in the solar network out there, if you have had this issue and you've had it fixed or you know what's going on, please let me know. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Overall, I will still say the system, I'm happy with it. It works pretty good. I love the power walls. I think it's really cool that they kick on during the uh, peak hours to reduce uh, during the uh, more expensive cost time of the day. So that's cool. There are some really interesting things that I don't understand. It has something to do with the settings, I'm sure, as to why the power wall doesn't work um, at certain times outside of the uh, peak hours. I understand it like during the day, it's trying to save the power wall for those that three to seven this time of year. After seven o'clock, you know, if there's still 60% power, my thought would be why not use it instead of drawing from the grid, even though it's cheaper. Seems like obviously you can go off a grid by just by hitting that button, which I can show you here. You can hit that go off grid and then take it off grid. Um, not something I want to do though all the time. And I'm hoping that I can figure out, you know, looking through these settings, you know, like backup reserve, I have it set up for 20% backup. Um, when monsoon season start, we may have some drop offs now and then it's not like a huge deal around here. And I do have it on time based control because we have this, you know, the different peak and off peak times here. <clears throat> and I do have it on permission to export, which up until this month, we were actually exporting a decent amount um, to the grid. But like yesterday, it was only 12.9, 7.8, and then a couple days of almost zero and zero. Um, it's just, again, it's been really hot. We've been running the AC more, even though we turn it up when we're not home. Anyway, overall, again, I, I'm very happy with Tesla. Check out the first video on the kind of the buying process, the install process, the support, all that. So far has been pretty good. It's still kind of hit and miss when you contact them. Um, let me know what your experiences is below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. But um, if you have any suggestions or you have any comments uh, that can help out, please leave those below. I'd love to hear from you and I appreciate you watching and we'll keep you updated as I get more information on this issue.